Hello, my name is Tracy Lucas, and I have been a member of Zanta since January 2011. Zanta is derived from the Sioux, meaning honest and trustworthy. We are a group of women who represent executives and professionals from diverse occupations. The Zanta Club of Greater Sandusky was chartered February 3, 1961. Just like Amelia Earhart, we belong to Zanta International, a worldwide service organization of women working to advance the status of women worldwide. But who are we? What have we done? And where are we going? These are some of the questions I will be asking Zanchins today. interested in hearing about your life and how it led to Zanta. I was approached by Lois Zank. She said that the Toledo Club, the Toledo Zanta Club, was organizing a club in Sandusky. And she explained a little bit about it. It was for business and professional women. And she gave me an invitation to join. I was invited to a meeting uh, back in 1988 and uh, I was a speaker uh, because of Amelia Earhart uh, celebration and being a flight attendant with United Airlines, so I was uh, invited to speak. Well, I had a YMCA background as a program director in Cleveland, and when I moved to Sandusky, I was still working with the YMCA, and I, that's always service-oriented. So Zanta was a natural segue for me, and as a result, uh, Arlene Simmons, who was a member at that time and a banker in the area, she led me to the Zanta Club. Well, my husband and I opened our business in 1957, it was, which made me eligible to become a Zanchin. And I was approached by Helen Hawley from the Toledo Club, and she made it sound like it was such an honor to be invited. As you formed the Zanta Club of Sandusky, what was the historical background and inspiration? I think they were approaching all the area towns that had women that were eligible. They were trying to include, include uh, uh, I think they had uh, approached Lorraine and some of the other fairly, you know, larger towns. Um, it was a feather in anybody's cap if a club would organize another one because they were interested in spreading Zanta throughout the world. And uh, all over the world, uh, clubs were asked to join, to start other ones. And so Toledo approached Sandusky I think their first approach was probably to Dorothy Schaefer. And uh, then they had a meeting with uh, several Toledo members and several people from Sandusky, and it went on from there. How did you recruit new members to join the club? By word of mouth. Uh, if you were in a profession, a business, where nobody else uh, filled that classification, you were asked to join. We all wanted to enlarge the club, and if you knew a person, a, a professional person that was eligible, you would ask them to be a guest and uh, try to get them to join. And we did gain quite a few members that way. What did you envision Zanta to do in the community when the Zanta Club of Sandusky was chartered and when you became a member? I think it would bring to attention what women were doing of importance in our community. We weren't just, nobody had heard of a Zanta before. Um, we heard of Rotary and Exchange and Kiwanis and Lions. And, and I knew that there was a women's organization too for service, the Altrusa Club. And I thought, well, Zanta could do something like that too. 
I liked what I heard from Lois Zank and decided I would like to be a part of that. What careers and professions are represented today? We have many. Um, just taking a look at our recent uh, membership roster, I can tell you we have someone who is actually in the airline industry. We have college instructors. We have artists. We have nonprofit directors. We have um, medical dental professionals. We have bankers, financial uh, folks, CPAs, um, small business owners, um, retired educators. We have all kinds of folks. It's a very diverse group. So uh, it's a membership group that really does uh, encourage diverse uh, careers and professions um, so that you're, you're not focused on just one particular, um, you know, just, just all teachers or just all doctors or just, you know, uh, whatever. And uh, so you're required by the membership of, uh, uh, of Zonta International to have a certain, uh, a certain percentage of, uh, of members. So, uh, so you do have to look for uh, different uh, criteria, uh, different members, and so that does uh, lead to a diverse group. Why did you join the Zonta Club of Greater Sandusky? Because it gave me an opportunity to really uh, meet a lot of different women and uh, form friendships outside of the business. I joined Zanta because uh, I really wanted to give back to the community. That was very important to me because of the fact that uh, um, I do believe that uh, uh, eventually you get to a point uh, in your life and uh, in your career that uh, you are able, not only financially, but also uh, time-wise, to be able to uh, give time back and, uh, and help uh, women and, and bring them up through, uh, um, through the community as much as we can. And I think that that's an, an obligation we all should have. For me, again, uh, I was new to the community, so the networking was a great idea, but also the service and the promise of service and giving back. What has been your fondest memory of the club? Probably my visit to the Bombay India Club. We have addresses for contacts all around the world. And knowing I was going to be in India and I was going to go through Bombay, I contacted them and got a response. And when I was there, I made the contact. Uh, I was uh, picked up by a member of the club, attended their meeting, and uh, I think they were as happy to see a Zanshan from the United States as I was to meet them in their lovely saris for their evening meal. And I brought home a little, a little souvenir. This was the gift of the Zanta Club of Bombay, India. When our club was younger, we used to visit other Zanta clubs. And we went to the Toledo Club, which is um, a big deal in Toledo. <laughs> we, we, um, it was like our country club or something, you know, to go there. And, uh, we went there, and we went to, I think, Fostoria, Fremont had a club. I think we visited that, and the clubs came to our meetings. And I don't know, we don't do that much anymore. But in the beginning, um, that was really uh, enjoyable. Many fundraising projects have been done throughout the years so to support our service projects. What fundraisers have we done in the past? One year, well, I think we did it several years. We made, um, we didn't make them, we bought them. Christmas ornaments with scenes from different areas in Sandusky. And every year we'd have a different one, and I think we did that every year until we ran out of scenes. <laughs> and we did very well with those. Uh, we used to have another uh, president, Margaret Milter, who unfortunately has passed as well. She had a, she had a needle craft shop downtown Sandusky years ago, and it was when big hair was popular. And Margaret always had big hair, and she had the uh, cigarette holder, you know, from the olden days. It was awesome. 
and you'd go in her shop and she'd have her cigarette going, you know. And I mean, this was how it was, you know. And, but she had all the supplies for the Afghans and the needle craft and everything. And she, her idea was, let's pick some memorable places in downtown Sandusky and sell these Christmas balls. And so we did that and people bought them for many years for all the different uh, things that were brought into it, like the clock and the fountain and things like that. Well, I remember when I first uh, joined Zonta that uh, there were a lot of uh, little uh, um, events that were always going on and it took a ton of time and produced very little uh, um, funding. And uh, so what we ended up doing, we made a deal with uh, everybody um, that uh, uh, if, if these uh, little events um, really could produce um, the funding that we would need for the type of uh, activities that we wanted to get involved with, uh, that uh, we would continue them or we would look for uh, something that, uh, um, that would enable us to be able to be much more productive and uh, uh, more visible within the community. And, uh, and quite frankly, took less of our time. Do you have a favorite fundraiser? Uh, probably, I would say, when we had the big raffle fund drive for the Harley Davidson. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of energy in the club and trying, you know, at that time, I think it was way back in 1997 or so, we were trying to, you know, sell $100 tickets for a motorcycle. And we were a women's club. So, I mean, it was just, you know, such a great idea that one of our members, Amy Gruby, had. Um, and then, you know, when it was a $100 ticket and we were only selling 300 tickets, and uh, I, I mean, it was just, and, and we weren't, like I said, we're, we weren't a hog group, uh, you know, a Harley owners group. Uh, we weren't uh, a club that uh, rode bikes or anything like that. Um, but uh, um, it, it, was, it was very entertaining to see everything. What fundraising project for Zanta that you have participated in has been the most fun? The one that comes to mind, um, I don't think he's still on television, but there was a Dr. Lyndon Smith, a um, physician, who specialized in pediatric care. And he was considered the, um, the, the person, and he was funny. And we sponsored him as a lecturer at Sandusky High School, and we sold tickets for that and made money because everybody knew him as a television figure and um, talked about nutrition for children and made a lot of sense, gave us some good points, but he was funny. Well, this was quite a while ago, but one year we did um, Christmas wrapping at our outlet mall and um, people would pay to have us especially men, you know, they wanted their gifts wrapped. And uh, that was a lot of fun because we had fun dealing with the people and uh, hearing about their wives that they were giving these gifts to and that. And um, probably the nuts. I, you know, like I said, they sell themselves. So I was so glad when we started selling nuts because people actually want to buy the nuts. So, you know, it was easy to sell those. And uh, so that became a fun project because those of, those of us that were initially involved with it, we all became known as the uh, uh, nut ladies. And uh, some of us uh, have uh, been able to uh, uh, continue with that moniker for quite some time, so. <laughs> we like to share it though, so. <laughs> What is the club presently doing for fundraising projects? Um, right now, we're going to be having our auction again, and it's uh, probably our biggest fundraiser. Okay. <laughs> 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 
on helping women and helping children and families. And to improve that status, the local club has been involved for years in a signature program called Make a Smile. And we've been involved with helping young people who somehow slip through the cracks with uh, dental care needs. We've been helping women so they can regain their smile and join the workforce. And we average between 120 and 200 people a year that we help, which is just amazing. And so we decided, well, if older women needed help with their dentures, for instance, why couldn't we use our money in that way? So the program is called Make a Smile. And when you smile, you show your good teeth. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. What do you think lies ahead in Zonta's future? Well, the good news is Generation Y and Generation Z, our young women coming up in the world today, are very oriented towards service. And they may not have a lot of money in their pocket because of their college education costs, but they are very, very willing to provide service. So we've almost gone around in a complete circle. Um, Gen X really wasn't real into volunteering and service but Gen Y and Gen Z are bringing the circle back around and they are ready and willing to do things for a cause. And if you look at what they buy, for example, like Tom's shoes, you know, they look for causes to support and that's really important to them. So I think Zante has a bright future. Well, I agree with Eileen that uh, I think we have a very bright future. I think uh, we have uh, um, a renaissance uh, uh, here in uh, not only the young people who have an interest in uh, uh, giving back to their community, but uh, uh, we also have uh, women in general uh, here in uh, Sandusky and Erie County. Uh, we've been able to uh, now um, start to uh, recruit and, uh, and, and get uh, uh, new members who are uh, definitely interested in giving back to the community, and I think that that's very important. Santa has influence. Um, maybe you see it in foreign countries more than you see it here. But when some of these women in India, in the countries of Africa, join together, there's a powerful voice there that is heard even in governments. We have a voice through the United Nations and we can do a lot of influencing there through channels that are already existing. We, we can be a part of a group like that that is known nationally and locally. If you had a chance to talk to a future Zanshin, what would you say? Well, I would tell them about everything we've done and encourage them to join and be a part of it. We're here. We're here to uh, help uh, uh, Erie Countyans. Uh, we're here to help uh, uh, the women of uh, Erie County and uh, the women beyond uh, Erie County worldwide. You better join. <laughs> you ought to join. We are in a community where this is a channel. We have service opportunities. You can do it as an individual, yes. You can do it with other groups, yes. With Zanta, you're doing it locally and nationally and internationally. And there aren't a whole lot of opportunities where you can do that. 
we can't wait to have you join us. Um, we need women like you, people that are feeling empowered, that have a lot of energy, and that want to make a difference. We hope you have enjoyed our rich history and know how excited we are about the future. The Zonta Club of Greater Sandusky are women networking with women to provide service not only to our community, but also worldwide.